Now that we're familiar with the graph of the parent function of logarithmics, we're going to look at the transformations of logarithmic functions. Now, this is going to be a new concept. Now, the values of a, h, and k are not new, but how we're going to look at the transformations will be. So let's first refresh our memory on a, h, and k. The standard form for logarithmic functions of transformations is a log base b of x minus h, that quantity, name plus k. Again, a deals with the orientation. Is it reflected across the x-axis if it's negative? It also deals with the shape. The larger the size of a, the more expanded vertically. Between 0 and 1, the more compressed vertically. Remember, h is your horizontal translation. Since the formula says x minus h, we need to remember it's the opposite of what you see and k is your vertical translation. So let's just take a look at some examples of this. First one we have is describe the transformation from the parent function and then sketch the graph of log base two of x plus two minus three. What I'm gonna do first is look at the values of a, h, and k. And so a is your coefficient of the logarithm, so a is one h is attached to your x in the quantity, so it's the opposite of what we see, so h is negative 2, and k is what you're adding or subtracting on the outside, which is negative 3. So to describe the transformation from the parent function, we're going to look at these values. h of negative 2 means I'm going to go left two units. A k of negative 3 means I'm going to go down three units. A of one does not change anything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the parent function of this logarithm. Now the parent function is going to be log base two of x. No h or k attached to it, just log base two of x. And I'm going to create my table of values for this. So y equals log base two of x. I have my x column, and I have my y column. Remember, when dealing with logarithms, they're the inverses of exponents, of exponential form. And so what we're going to do is we are going to choose our y values to get our x values. So I'm just going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And so to go and find the x values from here, what we're going to do is translate this to exponential form. If y is negative 2, that means 2 to the power of y, so 2 to the negative second equals x. So 2 to the negative second is 1 fourth. And I can remember that based off of my transformation, translating, converting. p equals log base b of your value. So b to the power, 2 to the y power. And so I have 2 to the y power, 2 to the negative first is 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first is 2. And 2 squared is 4. And so this represents the table of the parent function. But what I want to do is I want to graph this. And to graph the translative function, the transformation, what you're going to do is look at your h and k values. So we're going to look at our table. Left two units means that you actually move your x values to the left. So you're going to subtract 2 from your x values. And so we have 1 fourth minus 2 as negative 7 fourths. We have 1 half minus 2 as negative 3 halves. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. And 4 minus 2 is 2. So for the transformation, since we move left two units, that only affects your horizontal, which is your x values, we just subtract two. Our vertical says we go down three units. That's our y. 
And so we are going to subtract three from our y's. So negative two minus three is negative five. Negative one minus three is negative four. Zero minus three is negative three. One minus three is negative two. And two minus three is negative one. So if I wanted to graph this function, I'm just gonna plot these points. At negative seven fourths, I'm down to negative five. At negative three halves, I'm down to negative four. At negative one, I'm down to negative three. At zero, I'm down to negative two. And at two, I'm down to negative one. And then I'm going to just graph this with a curve. If I come from the y-intercept down to the left with my curve, it looks like I am approaching negative two. X equals negative two is an asymptote. And I'm coming across into the right, curving up to approach the next value. And so there is my graph. So to find your graph of transformations, make the table of the parent function, identify your a, h, and k, know the transformation that's going to occur from those values, and then apply that to the table. Let's look at one more. And this one's a little bit trickier. Let's give ourselves some room for it. The reason why this one is trickier is because if I identify my a, h, and k values, what I'm going to see is a here is negative one. h is one and k is two. Since a is negative, remember that means you are going to reflect over the x-axis. h of one, since it's positive, I also go right one unit k is 2, that means I go up 2 units. And so this is the transformation from the parent function. So let's first look at our parent function. The parent function, remember, is just the log. We have y equals log base 3 of x. Just a basic log, no h or k values, and a positive 1 for our a. And we just create our table of values from there. Remember, when you're translating from logarithmic form to exponential form, it's p equals log base b of your value. And so my base is 3, my power is the y. And so when I create my table values, I'm going to create the y values. And I'm, again, I'm just going to use basic negative 2 to positive 2. And so my power is my y. So my base is 3, so 3 to the negative second gives me x, so that's 1 ninth. 3 to the negative first gives me x, which that's 1 third. 3 to the 0 power gives me x, which is 1. 3 to the first is 3, and 3 squared is 9. And so this represents my table of values of the parent function. I now I'm going to take those and I'm going to apply my transformations to get the table values of the actual function we're trying to graph. So I have my x column, I have my y column. Right one unit means I'm changing, moving left and right, my x values. And since I'm going to the right, that means I'm going to add 1 to these x values. And that's going to give me. 1 ninth plus 1 is 10 ninths. 1 third plus 1 is 4 thirds. 1 plus 1 is 2. 3 plus 1 is 4. And 9 plus 1 is 10. Then I'm going to look at my y value transformations. Now, this one's trickier. Yes, our y value we see up to, however, we have yet to even address this reflecting over the x-axis. So we have to think, what does reflecting over the x-axis do? 
is that takes a y value that you have. So if I were just imagine this point of 2, 3 to reflect over the x-axis means I'm down to 2, negative 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is you need to think of it like alphabetical. Do your a transformation first. You reflect your values. And so to reflect over the x-axis means to change them. And so if I'm at negative 2 for it, I'm first going to be at, I'm going to do this over here, a positive 2. If I'm at negative 1 to reflect it, I'm going to be at a positive 1. 0 would not reflect, you're still at 0. Ne a positive 1 becomes a negative 1. And a positive 2 becomes a negative 2. And so this is our reflection. To move a point, say 2, 3, to the other side, the 3 becomes negative. You just multiplied by negative 1. Now I'm going to go up 2 units. And so up 2 units means you add 2 to your y values. So 2 plus 2 is 4. 1 plus 2 is 3, 0 plus 2 is 2, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And so these are the values I'm going to graph. At 10 ninths, I am at 4. At 4 thirds, I am at 3. At 2, am I at 2? At 4, I'm at 1. And over here, where 10 would be, I would be at 0. And so now let's connect these. I'm going to come down with my smooth curve. And I'm just going to go ahead and go through this point we can't see of 10, 0. And I'm going to go up with my smooth curve. And so there's the graph of the transformation. Now, transformations of logarithmic functions are hard because it's a new concept of using a table of values of the parent function, looking at your transformations, and just focusing on the right movement deals with the x column, the up or down movement deals with your y column, and the reflection is hard because you have to take care of that first before you deal with the k. And that's why I said think about it alphabetically for your y values. A comes for k, so deal with any reflection before you deal with any vertical movement.